Hi again. So now let's start talking about how to take those marks and channels and start placing them as elements that you can actually visualize with Gamble. So, or sorry, with D3. So in this case, I have a notebook that I created about, uh, some time ago that you can check in here. And basically it helps you going and understanding how you can start creating different elements and representing those in, in D3. So I recommend you taking a look and reading it with detail. It will help you understand like how you're actually creating these things. What you saw on the SVG part is that points are represented with SVG circles. Lines can be represented with, with paths and areas are also represented with paths unless you're using rectangular areas that can be represented with uh, rectangles. Uh, also, if you have a line for a bar chart or something like that, then what you are going to be using is um, it's 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 a uh, it's a um, sorry a, a rectangle too. So let's get started with some basic coding here. So um, apart from completing that, let's start creating like a, a basic chart and seeing how the selection and all of those things work. So let's say um, like intro to D three selections, and then having this one. Basically, remember the first thing we need is just to require. Uh, D3. Uh, usually what you're going to see me doing is starting most of the things from scratch. You don't need to do that, but for this early time, it's actually useful for, for you to understand what's happening in detail. So let's say that we are going to create like a bunch of, of people in here. So actually, let's say that I want to create like a, a random array, like the typical thing we have been doing. Uh, this is like the length of how many we want in there. Let's say we want 50 people. And then from there, we want uh, to start creating uh, elements in there. So basically, we can start with um, like creating objects. Remember that when you create an object with an arrow function, you need to wrap it in uh, a parentheses. So it knows that it's not like the definition of the function. And then I can, instead of using H or X, I'm actually going to use H. And then I'm going to say this is a math random and this is going to be multiplied by 120 years. And then um, you can also create in here, like for instance, what is the height? And then let's say that this one is actually going to be like something multiplied by two, or something like that, okay? So, as we saw before, uh, basically the objective of this is to start creating like something like a scatter plot. So what you want to do is just to start filling an SVG and putting circles inside. Remember? So um, instead, what I'm going to do is start using D3 for doing that. So basically, we can start with a, a, a SVG element. So let's say uh, something like this. Uh, or, or put like a target in here just to differentiate that so I can actually use the SVG name for something else. And then we can say that this is going to have a view box. And as we have seen, it's something like a zero, zero, and then width and then <coughs> uh, height. Okay, so, and then we can close this. And then I think we can even leave it like this. And then remember returning that. Whatever you return in here has to have has to have a um, um, uh, an HTML element. So make sure you're returning that. So of course this is failing because I haven't defined the height. In this case, let's say that the height is actually going to be whatever width we have multiplied by 0.4 or something like that. So now we have an SVG and we can start drawing things in there. Okay. So it seems like I might have an error in here. Um, oh yes, B way. So B box, there we go. So that's not like what I was expecting. So what I was trying to say is that if you wanna do that one, just as a refresher, a quick one, oops, uh, instead of using this, I actually wanna close the SVG in here. So the way we wanna draw this, if you remember, uh, the part on SVG is that we want to create circles in here. Okay, so we want to create one circle per each one of our elements, and we're going to see that in a minute. So, for instance, we can say here that this is going to have a radius of 30, and then just by doing that, we have one circle. Okay, 
So we can also say that this is going to be on position, let's say, like a 200 and see why it's going to be 200 as well. So when you do that, then you create this. Now, this is the normal way that you will do it just with HTML. But with D3, there is a way of doing that, and is that you can create a selection. So in this case, that's what I'm calling SVG in here. And I'm going to select my target. Remember that if you're actually doing this in Bourbon's HTML, what you will have is more like something like this. And then you will use a string with a CSS selector. Remember that hash is for IDs. And if you're using classes, then it's dot. If not, go and check the basics for, for web development if you don't remember that. Now, having that, one of the things you can do with that is that you can actually say, this is my SVG. And then on that SVG, I actually want to start appending another circle. So when you do that, then you can start changing the attributes of that. And then you can say, for the CX, we actually want it to be on the position, like let's say uh, 300. And then for the center in Y, let's say also 300. And then for the uh, radius, uh, I actually want it to be like 30 points. So what is effectively happening in here, and of course, I am not seeing that in there. Oh, yes. So in Observable, you shouldn't be doing it like this. If you actually want to do that, then you have to make sure that the, um, that the SVG is being rendered before you call this. So you will need to do something like this. So it would yield like the cell will return the SVG, and then uh, D3 will find it. But it's actually cleaner, I think, if you just select directly the element, something like this, and then you just return the element like that. OK, so we created the second circle with this. So basically what we're doing in there is that we created a selection and that selection uh, selected this SVG and inside that SVG. And this is very important. Whatever you use inside, it's what it's actually generating that in there. OK, so that's actually how I created that. So if i want to create like like points for each one of my elements then what i could do is that i could say something like this i could say for let d of my data and then remember that data is this one in here that has 50 positions and then it has an age and a height okay each object so basically this d is going to be an element on that so what i can do in there is that I can put that in here and then I can say uh, I can put like 300 of these circles and now you can have 300 of these in here um, but they are all on top of it all so if you actually want to see those uh, changing like you can say just d dot h and d dot height and if you remember what those are are actually the attributes that you're getting directly here from the data so um, and, and D is just like the iterator. So basically this is going to be iterating how many times we're doing that, like 50. And then drawing each one of those in, the, in their corresponding heights. So as you can see, they are all in here. Can you think of why they're there? So if you actually go and inspect the code and see how they are being created, then you can see that they are in CX, it's their age, and CY is their height in meters, because I'm weird. And, I use a uh, metric system. <laughs> so because of that, all of them are in the same Y position. And then in X, they are actually all smushed together. So we can fix that later, actually using um, a scale. So in this case, let's say that I just want uh, to multiply these by five, and then maybe these by 50 or something like that. And then they're a little bit more distributed, OK? Now, the other thing you can change is that you can also change the style for, for, for like an, an attribute. And then for that, you can use either style and then say, remember that we don't want that uh, horrible black one. And then so we can do something like this. And then of course, uh, this thing breaks. Um, I wonder, oh, uh, oh, it's important to actually keep your RLs in your still loop. So now you can see I'm actually adding all of those elements in there. So, so you can do that with style or you can do that with attribute like this. And let's say that I also want to add like a text next to it. 
So I can, instead of adding the circle, I can add a text and then the text is going to be like this. And then uh, remember that the text attribute, if you remember the SVG, whatever text you want to show has to go inside the text. So when you have something like that, then you use the text attribute and then whatever you pass in here, the text doesn't have an attribute, then that's actually what is going to be put in. So let's say that I'm going to show a name. So actually it's not showing anything because all of those have an undefined name. So let's say now that I'm going to add a name, that's going to be person. And then um, let's say I'm also using the I and then use the second parameter for this. That remember is the index. So now I do have a person in there. Once more, you can change attributes in those. I think we can say here, like for instance, what is the font size that we want to use? And then uh, that font size can be something small so we can actually see them all together, something like this. Okay, so that will be our first visualization. So the basics in here is that we have selected the target and with that selection, we can append elements and we are appending those in a, in a loop, okay? But we can do better. So here, let's go this way. And then uh, instead of doing that, what we are going to use is something called data binding. So what data binding does is that it tries to find all of your elements that are already in the, in the, uh, in the uh, in your HTML in your DOM and then it's going to try to create one for each one of your data points so basically if you take a look here we have one but then I want one circle per each one of my data points so the way you change that is that instead of doing this what you do is that you say you know what I'm actually going to create like a bunch of circles and then I'm going to say uh, let me paste that code in here. And then I'm going to say, I'm going to append the circle, but I'm going to take the SVG. And this is the weirdest part. I'm actually going to take all of the circles that are in there. And when you do select all, it's the same that select, but you're actually selecting more than once. With this, you're going to select only the first one that actually follows the whatever selector you're using. In here, this is going to select all of the circles that are inside my SVG. So actually I could say, I want to select all of the circles that have the node that, that for the moment, like just, let's just do it like this. And then on those, I'm actually going to do data binding with those, with my data. So this data is the one that we have in here. And then this data, it's actually the one that we are binding to, okay? So now when we're doing that, then you're going to say, I'm going to join with circles. And what that is going to do is that it's actually going to create an, an append inside that. And then that's going to create your circles in here. Having done that, then now you can see that this is giving me an error because now I don't have a D. So where do I get this D from? Like actually that was coming from here. So the way you fix that is that instead of passing the actual attribute that you want to give to D3, what you can pass is a function. So now I can say, this is an accessor function. This is very important. This is passing the function as a parameter. And that function is going to be called directly by D3 whenever it's ready. And in this case, it's going to be called 50 times. Okay, so that way, these, these attributes that depend on the data receive functions and the ones that are constant don't receive functions like this, okay? So when you do that, now I can get this thing to be working like that. And actually, let's put in here, like this is data binding, okay? So the key in here, the key in here is that basically uh, we are, again, taking the SVG where we want to create our things. Then we select all the circles and then we bind with the data. And then you join to whatever you want to create for that and then you pass whatever attributes inside that. And once you have done this, you can actually do this because the element is binded to the data. Now, if you actually see, there is a difference with what we had before and this one. And it's actually that we took like one of the elements, the circle that was in there, the circle from here, and we actually reuse it because what join does is that it searches for the circles that are already in there and the circles that aren't. And it creates the new ones. Those are is the enter uh, 
um, part and then the update part is the ones that needs to be updated so what, what 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 we are doing in here is that it's actually changing that for those so that's an exercise uh, try replicating like the same thing but for uh, the text one so I'm going to leave it like this for the moment okay so now we also have another thing to fix and is that these things are really ugly is they are not really showing up on the right position so we can change that with scales from d3 so basically what scales do, do is that they let you go from uh, the domain of the data to the range of the pixels so what you can do in there is that i want my age like i want my age to be standing on the whole width of the of the the page and my height to be standing on the whole height of the page so the way of doing that is that you can create an x scale here so you can say x is going to be a d3 scale and then the scale that you create in there is just a linear scale in this case if you want to create something for for your um for a quantitative value so the channel remember that we are actually when we are creating this chart we are using the mark point so basically marks in D3 are represented with circles. So the points are represented with circles. And then the channels, we are changing those by setting the position of the circle and also the radius, although the radius in this case is not changing. So the channel, whenever you have expressed, remember, when you actually are trying to show um, like a quantitative value, then you use a scale linear, unless you want to use a, a different linear for, for other reasons. And then the domain, has to be a domain that goes from like in your data. So we are going to be using for X age. So for that, actually you can say this is going to go from zero to 120. And then for the range, you can actually say, you know what, it's going to go from zero to the width, okay? And then from there, you can do the same for Y. And then I can create another one that it's for Y. And in this case, it's going to go from 0 to 3 meters and then to, from 0 to the height, okay? So now, when I have this, what these scales do um, is that they create a function that I can use for converting things from the data from one thing to the other. Like, for instance, let me put the scale in here. And then let's take, like, the first element from the data. And then this thing has an H. So if I take that age, this age, and I pass that through my scale, basically it's going to say anything that is 61 should go into the position uh, 489. And you can do the same with Y and then with the height. So if you do something like this, supposing that you have created your scale in a place that is visible here, then you can see that a height that that this specific height that is point like this is like 43 centimeters uh it's actually going to get represented in the position six because it's quite quite small okay so integrating those inside <coughs> basically what we can do is that we can say this is going to be an x of my age. So now we don't need that weird multiplication that we were doing before, and y of my height. So pretty much what we are doing is that we are passing the date, or sorry, the age from the domain of the data to the range of the pixels, and the same for y. So once you do that, then now you can see that it's actually distributing on the whole screen. And then, for instance, this one is not distributing the whole thing because of, of this thing. Okay, so again, the scales are the ones that allow you to go from the scale of the domain of the data to the range of, 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 the, of the screen. And then one of the advantages that you can see also is that it doesn't matter how you resize, see, since this thing is actually uh, using the width attribute, like this width attribute that is responsive, then you can see that it's actually redistributing to that space. Whereas, uh, for instance, these ones in here, uh, well, actually when I'm running that, it's recomputing these ones. Oh no, those ones not. Uh, so these ones, uh, so as you can see, it's actually getting things out of the screen, as you can see here. So 
that's one of the advantages of being using scales. So coming back in here, so now let's do another trick. <coughs> so let's clear up this and this. Usually you will actually define your scales on a different cell, so that way people can re rebuild this, rebuild them or, or um, reassign them. Or, uh, so in, in case they are forking an example of you, but in this case, since we are going to be repeating code, then I'm actually going to copy it like this. So now let's say that you want to show access in there. So if you want to show some access in there, so we can keep from this example. And then there is a couple tricks that you need to think about this. And it's that there is a way of adding an axis <coughs> and it's using a module called the tree axis. So uh, the way of doing that is that on your SVG, once you have your scales, then you can say on that SVG, I'm going to append a grouping. Remember a G is a grouping. And then inside that, you can start appending whatever attributes you want. Like for instance, I can append a rectangle and then I can say that the other rectangle is going to have a width of 500 and a height of, <coughs> let's say, for instance, 20, something like that. And then, of course, close that thing. And then you can see that's my thing in there. So I could say, you know what, this is going to be a width like that. And then I could start creating my axis like that. But that's, you don't want to work from scratch like that. So instead, what you do is that you say, I'm going to create an append in there. I'm going to say that that is going to have a class that I'm going to call X axis. And then basically what you just do is you do a call. And then that call is going to be creating an axis. This is for X. So it's going to be an axis bottom. So something like this. And that is going to be created out of my scale X. So now you have an axis that's on the top in there. And then you can see uh, like what it's the range that we are using. If you want to replicate the same thing with Y, <coughs> we can do the same thing here and then have a Y axis. And in this case, have our axis. And actually one of the nice things of observable is that you can see here without a complete that there is an axis left, okay? So when you do that, now I have an axis left. It does have a trouble though, problem though, is that it's not showing because it's in the border of my page. So one way of fixing that is that we can create a margin object and this margin can have like margins for all of the different elements. So we can say margin right, a margin top, a margin left, and a margin bottom, like different pixels that we're going to be using. And then what you're saying here is that, uh, you know what, I'm going to take this one and um, before actually calling the other one, although I think it will work the way, the same way if you do it afterwards. So I'm going to do a transform and that transform is basically an HTML attribute that you can use on any element that, especially on SVG for displacing things or for rotating. So in this case, I'm going to use it for translating, translating this into, and then actually I want these to be literals. So I want to translate that. And since we are moving the Y axis, we want to move it on to margin left. But on Y, we don't want to move it too much. So it's going to be on position zero. So now this thing is here. And actually, I can see a little bit of it. But then I can do the same with this one. <coughs> OK. And then, but this one, instead of moving to the margin left, it's actually going to be going not on X, but on Y. And then it's going to be going to the height. OK, so when I do that, now I cannot see it. So that is the problem because I'm going too far. So there is a nice pattern that my boss took started a while ago and I really like. So once you have this and you have your width and your height, just define this SVG to be the whole thing. But then you create and I like putting that as I width and Y height. And then what you do is that, you know what, let's subtract my margin left and my margin right from this and do the same with my eye height and then just take my height and then subtract from that my margin top minus my margin bottom. Now that I have that, then uh, I can actually start with this one. Hey, actually move here and then uh, that way it's going to be and it's getting closer. now. There is another trick that we can use, and is that um, 
we can actually go and create instead of drawing directly into this SVG we can go and take that SVG and append a general G and you're going to see that in a lot of examples that Mike does and that G is going to be the area where we actually draw and bear with me for a second so this one it's going to have a transform and translate similar to that one and then in there we are going to be translating to margin left and then uh, to margin um, margin left and margin top <coughs> okay so when I do that now I have a place to draw so just to make this clearer from the and then we can call this like my gene like I, I like calling it like G drawing or something like that and then what I'm going to do in there is that I'm instead of creating all of these things directly on the SVG I create them on the G drawing so that way this G is going to be inside the other one and the circles are going to be inside the other ones so now that's getting a little bit better so if you actually inspect here and then go and look at the code then you can notice I have my SVG that contains a G like that's my G drawing that contains an x-axis and then y-axis and then the circles okay so those are nested inside that okay so now that we have done that then we actually can say you know what like this is going to be from zero to my i width this is going to be from zero to my i height height then i actually have some space here some space there and then i can say you are going to uh, for my x-axis i'm going to go down and actually for this one I'm actually not really going to move it. and now it's feeling perfect in order for you to to have like a visual cube let me add in my g drawing like a rectangle and then this rectangle is going to have an attribute width of like the whole eye width um eye width come on and then <coughs> i'm going to do the same with the height and then use that in here and then so for this thing not to be so ugly we can change the style of this one I think Mike has been doing that only with attribute so let's say that the filling of this is going to be uh, like a great scale thingy. so now you can see that gray area is the main G when you put the everything inside then actually this Y axis it's actually going to be a little bit to the left and the X axis is going to be to the bottom because we use the translating there I don't know if you notice but we do have an error in here and that's actually important to keep in mind and is that if you see the axis is, is inverted so that happens because you say that you're going to be mapping from 0 to 2 <coughs> to the 0 to the height so actually what you want to do here if you, if you change this to be something like this then voila now everything is flipped and actually the code like all the elements in here are actually also going to be to flip to the positions that you want finally there is another trick that you can use and is that if for some reason let's say that I decide to create people that is bigger than this like for instance 150 years old because of all of a sudden we have more people then everyone that is more than 150 it's not going to show up so you don't want that so you actually want to uh, adjust this so you want to say this is going to be going to the maximum of my data using the dot h and you can do exactly the same with the height and use that in here okay so now when you do that then of course I make a mistake in here that this has to be with the height and then it's actually adjusting and, and putting those in, in their nice position there's also a nice thing that you can put in here that it's a nice attribute I think I can put that in here and then just by doing that the axes are going to be rounded to something that is a little bit more meaningful in this case since it's going to 2 it's, it's, it's good uh, before it might have been like 1.9 that doesn't look that good okay so that's how you create like a basic scatter plot in, in the tree now for the final trick let's say that you also want to create um, like a categorical scale categorical scale so when you want to do something like that then basically what the way you do that is that let's replicate this one 
Now we have this. Now we have need a category called variable. So let's go back to our data and then let's add a new one. So let's say that for instance, we can have a profession and then I hope that's how you write profession. And then we are going to have like three, like this is teacher and then this is going to be, uh, I don't know, like a lawyer and then coffee grower. <laughs> So basically when you have those, then I have to select one of those. So if I keep on doing the thing with the three things, then I just need to do a math floor of a math random of multiply by three. That is the number of elements that I have in there. And hopefully that seems to be working. Coffee, does coffee have two is? Hey Google, does coffee have two is? Seems like it. There we go. So I should write cafe. <laughs> so now I have an extra attribute and now I can start creating that uh, in there. So one of the things I could do is that I could just go copy one of these and then I want to create a new scale. This one isn't going to be Y, it's going to be called color. And then since this is categorical, remember like when you express, then you use scale linear. But if you want to use separate order and align, that is what you need to use for categorical uh, attributes, then you use a scale ordinal. Then when you have scale ordinals, instead of having a domain that has only two values, you should have like as many attributes as you want, as you have. Like in this case, it's going to be, for instance, what would be a good way of taking this? <coughs> um, like uh, we could use a nest. I think they did, oh yes, I think I can create. So actually let's try creating that in here. So I can take my whole data and then I can map and only get my profession. Is that how I wrote that? Of course not. Profession, there we go. And does that prof, does profession have an extra F? Profession, now of course it's giving me uh, like Spanish. So now I have all of the professions and then I can create a new set and for having those I can get the keys and then I can make that an array. And of course uh, like that. There we go. <coughs> so basically this one returns like, like let's rebuild that quickly. So basically what you can do in there is that First, I get all of the options. Then I create a set out of that. So now I have three elements in there. And then I can say for out of that set, what are the values of that, I think is how you say. But that is returning an iterator. So I actually want to convert that into an array. So uh, I wonder if there is a method for that. So one way of doing that with JavaScript is just saying, let's create an array out of this iterator. And that gives you that. So you could actually just say, uh, these are my keys, like uh, color keys or whatever. And then we use that in there. But since we are writing all of the code inside, so we can actually put it in here. So we can say inside the domain, just put this here. So those are actually going to be all of the possible options, in this case, three. And then in the range, you have to say, what are the actual values that you want to use? You can say still blue and then salmon and then uh, like cyan or something like that, although salmon might be too red. There is no nice in scale ordinals. And now I have a nice scale. And then instead of changing the X and the Y, what we are going to be changing in here, it's for instance, oh, sorry, is the field. So instead of reporting always still blue, I'm going now since these depend on the data, then I'm going to get this out of the profession, pass by the color. And the nice thing about that scale is that it's going to transform the strings into colors. And now I have nice colors for that. So once again, like these are scales for scale linears. These are scales for categorical attributes. And then I'm using them in here for all of the different elements here. A recap, uh, basically we created a margin and calculated a width and a height. This is where we are drawing everything. This is the same element that we are returning here because that's the one that we are drawing. And then we select that 
we create a G drawing out of that that is basically displaced a little bit is the gray area that you can see in there and then um, inside that we are going to be drawing using these three scales and scales are things that build from the domain of the data to the range of, of the pixels we have two linear ones that are the ones that allow us to do express and then we have a categorical one that is the one that allow us to go from uh, um, uh, categorical attributes into other categorical attributes. I actually remember like the domain in here is specified with two numbers. The range is two numbers. In here it's like all the possible values and here all the possible colors. If you don't want to set your own colors, which is usually a bad idea, then you can use like the colors that D3 includes. So in this case I want to use like let's say like scheme accent and then just by doing that gives me some nice colors for that <coughs> excuse me and actually one of the nice things about scale color is that you don't really need to set up the domain so you can just skip this and then let it uh, as it's it as is it is finding colors then it's going to assign what it's a color that that you want okay um what else if you want for instance to show a little color legend in there for that if this is something that you have outside then you can have a module for that we we're going to learn a little bit more about that and then finally we are creating two uh, g's for adding the axis axes or axis and then here we're doing data binding selecting the circle binding to the data then we're creating a circle for each one of those and then changing these attributes to those and that is the basic introduction for that i know it's a lot to 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 digest so try replicating all of these and try adding some labels so so you can see if you actually understood the whole concept